In this video, you will learn the different ways in which purchase orders can be raised, a bit about purchase order statuses and the workflow, you'll learn how to create purchase orders manually, and then how to process a purchase order by sending it to your supplier, receiving the inventory, receiving the invoice, and then paying your supplier for the order. Purchase orders can be created manually by cloning an existing order from batches of sales orders, by importing a spreadsheet, or from the low inventory report. In this video, you'll be learning how to enter them manually. Purchase orders in BrightPearl allow you to send and keep a record of the orders you've placed with your suppliers. Purchase orders are also required for receiving goods in so that you can update your inventory levels. And once you're invoiced, that is also received directly against the purchase order. Here's a purchase order I've already placed with my supplier. Each order is monitored through the purchasing cycle using purchase statuses. These statuses are customizable within the setup area, allowing you to create your own purchasing workflow. It's possible to define some statuses to be updated automatically. For example, once the order is emailed to the supplier, I have chosen the status placed with supplier to be assigned. The status of the inventory is monitored using this icon to indicate whether none, some, or all of the ordered items have been received. Creating a new purchase order can be done from the supplier or vendor record, from the quick add icon, or from the purchases menu. Add products to the order one by one by searching on name or SKU. All items can be added in batches. The supplier price list is automatically selected as it's the one assigned to the supplier record. This will make sure that all the products are added using the prices that they have offered you. Click to add a single item or enter the quantities and then add them as a batch. The window remains open so you can continue to search and add more items. If you have saved supplier SKUs on this price list for your products, they'll be displayed as the item code. Helpful to ensure you're ordering the correct items from your supplier when they can see their own references. Once you've created the order, you just need to send it to your supplier. So click the email or print button. This is the purchase order document that will be sent to the supplier. You can customize your templates and you can create more than one. After emailing, we see that the status is automatically updated as defined in the setup area. Now you can wait for delivery, and you can even make a note of the expected delivery date, which always defaults to a couple of days. If the supplier provides their own reference, you can record that in the supplier or vendor reference field. Your products will now have an on-order quantity. Clicking on the inventory levels allows you to see which purchase orders are currently open, along with the expected delivery date. When the delivery arrives at goods in, the supplier will usually have provided a delivery note, which will state the items that were ordered and how many of those have been delivered. Of course, you'll want to double check that the package actually includes all the items they've stated. The items received will need to be booked into stock in order to update your inventory levels. That's done directly against the original purchase order. Reopen the purchase order and receive the inventory. For each item, you will need to confirm how many have been received. If any items are missing or back ordered, Simply edit the quantity to state how many are being added into stock. You'll learn more about back orders in another video, so let's keep it simple at this stage and say that all items have been received. If you're using warehouse locations, you will be receiving items into a location. Locations are covered in detail in another video. But it's worth noting that you can print a put away note to assist warehouse staff in putting the items into those locations within the warehouse. Now the items have been received, we see the received status is updated and the line items are green, indicating the full quantity ordered has been received. Those items will now be in stock and on hand available for selling. Where those products are listed on integrated sales channels, the quantity available is automatically updated. The supplier will also want paying for those items, and so they will usually send an invoice. This needs to be posted into BrightPearl to record the fact they are owed money, how much, and when it's due to be paid. The invoice is also received directly against the order. But before you do that, you need to make sure that the order is equal to the invoice from the supplier. Whatever is on the order screen here is what will be posted to accounts payable. Remember the prices on the order originally came from the price list which is stored in BrightPearl. If the supplier invoice shows different prices, they have either updated their prices or perhaps invoiced you incorrectly. If you believe the invoice to be incorrect, you should not receive it on the order and ensure you check with your supplier first. If the prices on the invoice are correct, 
you need to edit the order to match. When the line prices, tax and totals and the overall total matches that of the invoice, the invoice can be received. Enter the supplier invoice number and date as it appears on the document. And where credit terms have been recorded against the supplier record, they are used to calculate the payment due date. Where prices have been changed, your price list in Brightpearl will simultaneously be updated when the invoice is received. If you don't want this to happen, uncheck these boxes. Once posted, the order is locked and the accounting is created. You can see the balance is added to the supplier account. All that's left for me to do now is pay my supplier. Various ways of doing this are covered in another video, but for now I'm going to mark this single order as paid from here.